What's going on guys? Two is in a block back again. We're in the garage with the Fentro Silverado. And it's time for an oil change. So we're in the garage with the shop truck. This is the 1990 model Chevy K1500 Silverado. And it's time for an oil change. We're going to go through the steps to get your oil changed the right way the first time. First thing you want to do is pop your hood. Now on these old OBS Chevy trucks, you see I pull the hood release? Not uncommon. You have to get up here, right in this area, tap it one time, pop right up. All right, your oil level. Always good to check your oil before you change it. See where we're at here. We're still in operation range. This truck does have a little bit of an oil leak, so not surprised that it's not to the top of the operating range. It does have a little bit of a leak. That's where you check your oil on the left side, and the oil fill is over here on the right side. You just unscrew this cap. Recommendation for these trucks, I believe, is 5W30. Yep, it's on there, a little bit dusty. There we go, 5W30. So that's where we're going to fill the oil at. So what we're going to be using today is the Mobile Super 5000. We're also going to add a can of this. This is the store, engine restore, and lubricant. And mainly just because this engine's got some miles on it. Not really sure how many miles. The odometer says 55,000, but not sure. And we're going to be using the Frigid Ram or Frigid Yams. Yep. Tell me don't use Fram filters. This one was in the truck when I got it. I've changed the oil once since I had the truck, and this filter I found in the behind the seat. So this is the FD3980. The reason I'm going over this oil change specifically is because the procedure is a little bit different on these K-Series trucks. The oil filter is located in a slightly different orientation than it is on the two-wheel drive trucks. So anything that's a two-wheel drive that has a 350 in it is basically going to be the same thing as your... Nova's Camaros, all those series of engines. The oil filter is relocated on these trucks to clear the exhaust and more importantly, the front drive shaft, which you can see right down there, there's a blue filter, just barely, and it's right above that drive shaft. So that's why the oil filter is in a different orientation than vertical. So they kind of caddy cornered it and moved it 90 degrees so it kind of sits off like that from the side of the engine. Let's go take a look underneath and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about. All right, sliding underneath the truck, you can see that's our oil filter located just above the front drive shaft. That runs all the way back to the transfer case. And that's the oil filter adapter right there that's bolted to the bottom of the block. Puts it over at an angle so that it clears the drive shaft. Now you can see I've got quite a bit of oil leakage up there, which tells me I've got a valve cover gasket that's leaking. So I will have to address that. But right now, we're going to go ahead and take care of the oil change, and then we will see why my valve cover gasket is leaking. Let's see if we can get that taken care of. Tools for the job 9 16th ratchet or socket to take the oil drain plug off. I'll be using an adjustable oil filter wrench you see here. Uh, this one I got from Walmart. It's a Super Tech. I'm sorry, it's a Hyper Tough. Used to be Super Tech. I think now it's Hyper Tough at Walmart. But yeah, it's got a 3 8 diameter here where you can put a ratchet or an extension on there. And this is an oil filter wrench that when you swivel it, it moves the legs in and out. So universal. That's what I'm using. Now, fortunately, this oil filter is not super tight, so I can rotate with my hand. If you guys are wondering how I got the camera down here, it's actually sitting in the oil drain pan on a tripod. And if you want your factory oil filter number, there you go. It's the PF52E. That's your factory Delco part number. Just like that right there. Here we go. So, yeah. It does fit in there. Um, all right. All 
Now you want to take your rag and go ahead and clean up this area where you just removed your oil filter from. Right in there. Let's go ahead and wipe that face down. And I went ahead and put some oil on this O-ring. So be sure to take some oil, old or new, put on this O-ring before you screw this on here. Because if you don't, you will not get that filter back off of there. In fact, I hurt my wrist trying to remove one before that had been over tightened and had no oil. And it was a mess trying to get it off. So there you go, turn it clockwise. Really pretty much until it gets kind of snug and then a quarter turn. Don't want to over tighten it, just hand tighten. Don't use an impact, just don't use an impact. That's all you gotta do, right there. There's your oil drain plug, right there. I'll grab my wrench and we'll take that loose. All right, there's the oil drain plug. This is a 9 16 proper size. Let's rotate it counterclockwise. Make sure you got your drain pan in place. You will want an oil drain pan. I think I mentioned that already. And just get your hands clear. I'll let that go ahead and finish draining out. Then we'll put a drain plug back on and fill it up. All right, just about all our oil is drained out. We just got a little slow drip there. So we're gonna go ahead and put our drain plug back in. Got a 9 16 wrench. We're gonna tighten up just a little bit. Can't remember how many inch pounds this is, but you just want her snug. Don't go too far. You break it off an oil pan, you have a real bad day. Now these older drain plugs are steel. They're not um, this new composite or chinesium or a combination of steel and cladium or any of that stuff. So typically your older drain plugs are gonna hold up better. You can still get a good quality one from a part store if you need one, but that's it. Now that we got the oil drain, we've got the drain plug back in, we've got our new oil filter on. Let's go up top and refill the crankcase. All right, I got my big funnel down there in the bow cover where I showed you the oil fill was at. So we're going to go ahead and pour in our engine restore. This is an eight cylinder lubricant, uh, it's upper cylinder lubricant, and um, basically supposed to have all the rings, valves, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, this engine was smoking a little bit. I think it's more fuel than oil. However, it never hurts <clears throat> to add a little bit of longevity to your engine. I've used this stuff before, it actually works really well. Used it for years, for a decade. Two decades, actually. Yeah. Pour that in there like so. Go ahead and grab my oil. We're gonna go ahead and fill her up. Again, we're using 10W30. This is the mobile Super 5000. I had a video that I did several years ago. Oil change for a Pontiac Grand Prix. And one of the comments was, you never said the weight of the oil. I showed the weight of the oil. I guess I need to say the weight of the oil. Show the picture of the oil container. I guess I need to say the way the oil. So I've set 1030 for this truck. All five quarts goes in. Just gonna pour it in. Again, this is why I like a big funnel. You can pour it in pretty quickly and you don't have to worry about making a mess. And if you're wondering about the additional additive fluid level with the additive to the oil, you could run your, yourself a quart lower and put that in. But what I've noticed over time is it kind of dissipates into the oil. So a half a quart is not going to make that much of a difference or a quarter of a quart. Let's see. This container is 16 ounces. So, yep, that's your difference. If you want to subtract it out, I'm not going to. Because like I said, we have a little bit of an oil leak issue. Possibly a little consumption issue. And by the time I hit 1,000 miles or 2,000 miles, it'll be fine. For these trucks, there is an oil reset light or oil life monitor. It's all on the owner of the vehicle. So you gotta keep up with your maintenance. These older 350s, 3,000 miles. You can go 5,000 if you want to. I typically go 3,000 on them. They're fine. Usually don't have any issues. Pretty straightforward. So I tighten up the oil fill cap to screw it back in. Now go ahead and mention this while you're underneath your hood. It's a good time to go ahead and check the rest of your fluids. Check your brake fluid reservoir, make sure it's topped off, make sure your brake fluid's not black. That looks good. 
checking the washer fluid, it looks good. And the coolant over here also looks good. The engine bay itself does not look good. It's pretty dirty, but we can clean that up another time. All right, that wraps up the oil change for the Fence Rose Silverado. I know you're looking like, three wheels, that, that's not the same color as the cab or the rest of the truck. No, it's not. I did not pull all that stuff off and paint the inside of the engine bay. I will pull this stuff off and I'm gonna paint it all black, but I didn't do it blue. So there you go. We'll do that in another video. All right, that's gonna wrap up the video for the oil change on the Fence Row Silverado. It's the 1990 K1500 four wheel drive Chevy pickup truck with a 5.7 liter 350. Uh, if you've done this on your truck, let me know what you if you've done the same thing, if you did something slightly different. My name's Erwin, this three wheels on a block. We're giving back, but time is taken away. We'll see you soon.